fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> In the pioneer days of the western United States, gunmen and soldiers, outlaws, cattlemen, and Indians lived dangerously and knew the thrill of adventure. But the most daring figure of them all was the masked rider of justice. Stories of his deeds have been told and retold through the generations. And now return with us once more to the days when the Phantom of the Plains fought crime with justice. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver old fellow. Stretch out those great legs of yours. There's an important trial in the town of Paston. Mario Silver! Away! As the Lone Ranger rode by on Silver, he said that he was heading for the town of Potsdam. When the masked man and his faithful Indian companion taunt wintered town, they found the streets deserted, although it was only mid-afternoon. The townspeople had left their work to attend the trial of young Bob McAllister, charged with murder. But old Lem Purvis did not share their curiosity. He was content to sit on the steps of the courthouse, idly whittling, until the voice of the Lone Ranger demanded his attention. Say there, what's going on inside the court? Hey? Great guns, your mask! Don't let that scare you. What's the trial for? They're fixing to hang young Bob McAllister. And if ever there was a man framed, Bob's him. What's he accused of? Robbery and murder is all. Well, they can hang him for murder, but by darn, they can't get back what he said to have stole because he didn't steal nothing. Don't know who did, but Bob didn't. Why are you so sure of that? Stranger, when a man lives to be my age out here, it's because he's got blame good judgment and has the knack of picking out straight shooters from the ornery run of polecats and buzzards. McAllister's a straight shooter and always has been. You yourself, for instance. What about me? You ain't what your mask can make you out to be. <laughs> no, sirree. I ain't talked with you five minutes, and I size you up as a right-thinking hombre. And in spite of your mask, at that. <laughs> I'd like to hear more about McAllister. Well, he'll be found guilty before sundown, hang before sunup, and then some skunk will have peace of mind, knowing Bob's paid for the murder of Joe Findlay. You said Bob was not guilty. Sure as my name's Lem Purvis, he ain't. It's a dirty shame the way things piled up again him. He didn't have no alibi for the night Joe was knifed. He was known to have rowed with Joe a couple hours previous. So Sheriff Green called on Bob at the express office where he worked. Found the murder knife in his desk where some rat put it. And hailed him into court for trial. Tonto? Mm -hmm. We we stay here for time. Exactly. You better not. Our sheriff's gosh awful ambitious. And he'd likely jail you and hang you just because you wear a mask. I'll take that chance. But Sheriff Green ain't as slick as I am sizing a man up. You better not take no chances. We'll go over to the side of the building. I see an open window there. We here trial there? Yes. 
That's again my good advice to you, stranger. Thanks for the advice, Lem. If you thank me, take it and shove on. And let Bob McAllister hang for what he didn't do? Well, there ain't much you can do to stop it. I can talk to you again. Hey? And possibly you'll tell me which of the men in town you think might have framed McAllister. Come on, Tonto. Maybe old man vice good. Tonto, we're going to stay here. Don't you know that? Did you keep us up? Uh, we see tile now. There, window. We'll get as close as we dare. I know it looks as if the jury's coming in. Yeah. And from their expressions, it looks as if the worst has happened. That's a hanging jury if ever I seen one. Bob ain't got no chance at all. I wonder if he's really guilty. The sheriff sure thought so when he gave his testimony. Order! Order this here court! Order! Well, the uh, foreman of the jury in the case of uh, State versus Robert McAllister, charged with the murder of Joe Finley, please rise. Yes, sir. And take that hat off. Ain't you no respect for the court? Not a heck of a lie. <laughs> That'll do. Don't you get so flip. Has the jury reached a verdict? We has. Then let's hear it. We find the prisoner guilty as charged. <laughs> The prisoner will uh, please to stand and face the judge. I don't suppose there's any use of me saying any more now, is there, Judge? No, McAllister, there ain't. You do, however, have a chance to speak before I pass sentence if you got something worth saying. I have. I got something to say. Well? I know what the sentence will be. I'll hang. But there's just one thing I'd, I'd like to ask. Let me go to my mother... For just a couple of hours. Where is she? It ain't far, Judge. Only a couple hours riding. She she ain't able to get around much, and when I'm I'm gone, I I don't know who'll take care of her. She'll need cash and need it bad, and well, I've I've got some cash hidden. The stolen cash? No, sir. It was bonds that were stolen from Joe Finley, not cash. The cash is my own. Ma don't know where it is. Can't allow a condemned man to leave here. Anything else to say? But, Judge, I've got to see Ma. Tell someone where the cash is and the message will be taken. Tell someone? Hmm. Well, the way this trial's been handled, I wouldn't trust anyone. What's that? Someone in this town framed me for murder. I'd sooner have Ma not get the cash than give some rat a chance to steal it. That's enough from you, McAllister. The court will now pass sentence. I sentence you to be hanged by the neck until dead. The time... At sunrise tomorrow morning, the sheriff will take the prisoner in custody and put him under constant guard till morning. Come on, Bob. All you folks stay in your seats till the prisoner's removed. You needn't hold your gun on me, Sheriff. I, I know there ain't no use trying to break loose. Serve your right, you murderer. Listen, I'm not going to stand. There ain't no use your reply at all. Kill Joe Finley, huh? Well, you'll see him where he's gone right soon. Go to the jail with you, Sheriff. Take the other side of the prisoner, Larson. Go on, McAllison. Hi there, Bob. Tough luck. I was rooting for you, but I was afeard the card was stacked. Quiet, Lem. Ain't allowed you to talk to the prisoner. There's the jail straight ahead, Bob. I ain't a killer, Larson. I I don't want to be hanged. Mm-hmm. I know you don't, Bob, and I ain't so sure you're guilty. I don't go at all. It was the evidence. I wish there was something I could have done to help. Shut your mouth, Larson. That ain't no way for a deputy to talk to a condemned man. I wouldn't mind the hanging half as much if only I could get to see my mother. Just long enough to give her the cash. I suppose you don't care to tell me where it is any more than you do anyone else in town. I ain't trusting no one. This real murder of Joe Finley is slick. He'd get that cash if anyone in town knew where it was. I'm not you going to... wait. Stand aside, Injun. You wait. Me want to talk with the feller. Move along. It ain't allowed. Where your mother live? I ain't talking. I... You tell me. No. Get back there. Bless you. You ain't allowed to run alongside us like that. We can't tell lie. Tell Redskin, Bob. You can trust him. I ain't telling nobody. Let me talk with you, Injun. I got some ideas of my own. <laughs> That night, Bob McAllister sat alone in his cell while Larson, the deputy sheriff, stood guard outside. 
As he watched, the masked man and Tonto were moving quietly toward the shadowed jail. We're justified, Tonto. I'm sure of it. Mm, that's right. I'm convinced that Bob told the truth. Uh. I'm afraid there's little chance to save him, though. There's too much evidence piled up against him. You know what Lem Puller tell you. Yes. Lem Purvis does seem to be a good judge of men. If only we can get Bob to his mother. I'm sure he'll feel a lot better. Mm, that's right. She'll at least have some money to take care of her. Uh. There's a the jail. In there. Their guard. Can you make out who the guard is? Look like deputy. Which one? The Larson feller. The only man in town outside of Lem Purpose who had a kind word to say to Bob. Mm. I'm sorry he's the guard, but it can't be helped. We're here to help Bob. Come on, Tonto. We'll move ahead slowly. We don't want him to have the chance to raise any alarm. Ain't no use my trying to sleep anyhow. So you may as well talk if you don't mind, Larson. I don't mind, Bob. Anything I can do to make it a little easier, I'm glad to do it. Thanks. It wouldn't do, though, for me to be seen confabbing through the bars like this. I suppose not. Don't you reckon it'd be a good idea to try and sleep? For what? I got about six hours left on Earth. Why should I waste them sleeping? This is the last time I'll see them stars in the sky. The last time I'll, I'll be able to talk to anyone. And I didn't kill Joe Finley. It ain't right, Larson. It ain't just. Take it easy, Bob. Getting head up won't help none. And Mother, she don't even know I'm in trouble. She'll be looking for me to come home tonight. And, and I won't be able to. Then she'll learn what's happened. Then I... I can't stand thinking of it, Larson. Now look up, Bob. We all got to go someday. But hanging, going as a murderer. If he ain't guilty, you'll get square judgment later on. But what of the real killer? He goes free. Now he... Look here, Bob. I reckon I showed you I'm a friend, ain't I? Yeah, sure you have, Larson. Done all I could for you, huh? Yeah. I'd do more if you'd let me. I know how you feel about trusting anyone. But it's important that your mother get that money you got here. I'll take a message to her. I... Uh, Wait. Huh? Quiet. Oh, I heard something over yonder. I, I didn't hear it. I did. I... Get oh, you oh, an Indian. Oh, not keep him quiet. You didn't hit him too hard, did you, Tonto? Knock him out. I know. Well, be sure he isn't seriously hurt. Then gag him and tie him up. I don't savvy this. What, what does it mean? Who are hey, you? Callister, if you have the chance to see your mother, will you be willing to come back here before daybreak? I, I, I'd do anything for that. If I could see him off for just a few minutes... That's why I'd... we're here. Find the keys on the deputy, Tonto. Me got him. Here, Silver. Your mask. Yes. Why are you doing this for me? Because I think you deserve it. Yeah, come on out. We'll let you see your mother. You'll have to travel on my horse with me. Tonto, you stay here and watch the deputy. Mm, me watch him. Is he conscious yet? No. Well, keep an eye on him. Gosh, I, I'm sure sorry I had to clout Mike Larson so hard. Why? Well, he was right fine to me. Hope he ain't hurt bad. He isn't. He was willing to do most anything for me. He seemed very friendly. Yeah, but come on. Let's start riding if I got to be back here by sunup. Very well. Hope the guy should take good care of Larson, Injun. Mm, Tonto will do. I, I almost told him where the cash was hid. I reckon I might have took the chance if you hadn't come along. But wait. How do I know you won't steal the cash? I don't know where it is. You might watch Ma when she goes for it. How do you know about it in the first place? Well, answer me. Wait. I'm thinking... Well, I guess I'll have to take a chance on you. I ain't no choice. I know Larson would let me out of the jail. He's too honest to betray his job. Honest, is he? Sure. Very well, Bob. Huh? Back in jail with you. Oh, hold on. Wait a Didn't second. Go. Well, what's the I matter? I want to talk to you some more. Oh, let go get of me. Get back there. Tonto, get some more and try to bring the deputy around as soon as possible. Uh, what did I do to make you change so suddenly? You said you'd trust the deputy. Well, trust him. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. And now to continue our story. 
Bob McAllister, sentenced to death for murder, wished to send his savings to his mother, but felt that no one could be trusted. The Lone Ranger, believing the young man innocent, planned to release Bob long enough to carry the money himself. But at the last moment, learning that Deputy Sheriff Larson had proved friendly to his prisoner, the masked man returned Bob to his cell. Fifteen minutes later, the deputy recovered consciousness. Bob watched him from behind the bars. Oh, my head. You ain't hurt bad, are you, Larson? Who oh, hit me? I, I, A redskin. I, oh, I remember now. Where'd he go? What'd he do? Don't know where he went, but he didn't do anything. I figure he might have planned to help me bust loose, but got scared away by something. You sure fetched me a whack. Uh, how long was I knocked out? Not so very long. I don't have no way of keeping time. Oh, that's so. Uh, I'll hunt for that engine Omar as soon as you... As soon as my hanging is over. Oh, it's a darn shame. Your, your ma won't never have that cash. Deputy, I've got to trust someone. You're foolish not to. There ain't nothing to lose. I'd see that your ma got it. I'm going to trust you. Good. I'll do what I can, Bob. You ought to know that. Look here. There'll be another guard put on the job tonight, won't there? Sure. I... I wish you'd head for Ma's place as soon as you're relieved. Tell her all that happened and tell her that I ain't guilty. That'll make it easier for her to bear. She'll believe you. I'll tell her, Bob. When you've told her, then tell her where my savings are hid. Where's that? Inside a hollow tree stump, 50 yards in front of the house. That'll be easy to find. Sure it will. Uh, it's going to be hard telling your Ma about you. I know. But Ma will take it with her chin up. She's that kind. I hope so. Be pretty late at night when I get there, though. The next guard has to relieve me first, and then it's a couple hours' ride. Ma will be awake. She will? Yeah. She, she expected me to be coming home sometime before morning, and she'll likely be waiting up for me. Oh. There'll be lights in the house. Don't let me down, Larson. I'm trusting you. I won't let you down. Not on your life. I'll ride for your house as soon as the next guard comes to take my place. When the deputy was relieved, he immediately saddled and rode to the McAllister home as he'd promised. When he arrived, Bob's mother was half asleep in her favorite rocking chair, a lamp burning on the table beside her. When the deputy knocked, she opened her eyes. Oh, that must be Bob come home. Must be I barred the door, not thinking. The door ain't barred at that. I wonder, is that you, Bob? No, ma'am. It's Deputy Sheriff Larson. What do you want at this time of night? I got news. I brought your son, ma'am. Open the door. What about him? Has, has something happened? Where is Bob? What I got to tell ain't pleasant, ma'am. Mind if I step in? Oh, come in. Come in, Deputy Larson. I, uh... I don't know just how to start, ma'am. What's I... happened to my son? I believed in him all through. That was why he trusted me, where he wouldn't trust nobody else. Will you get to the point? Well, a while ago, there was a man killed. Name was Joe Findlay. Well, what about it? Bob was working in town, as you know. Yes? We'd had a little argument with Joe, but none of us thought it was as serious as it turned out to be. You don't mean Joe. Joe Findlay was... The law charged Bob with the knife. Oh, there's a mistake. My Bob wouldn't do no such thing. That's just how I felt, ma'am. Even when they searched his desk where he worked and found the knife he'd used, I wouldn't believe it. Bob didn't do it. The law found different. He's, he's been found guilty, and I reckon you know what that means. It means Sheriff Green's made another mistake. Being his deputy, I should have thought just as he did. But I didn't think Bob was guilty. I was guarding him tonight, and he asked me to come here and tell you what happened. He wanted me to tell you that... that... Well, ma'am, they don't lose no time in carrying out the laws here. He, he's to hang its son up. Oh. Yeah. Now the worst is over. I... He said you'd be brave about it, ma'am. I... I will be, Mr. Larson. We... We got to be prepared. Prepared all the time. We got to see the West take those we love the most. I saw this country take my husband from me. I saw two of my children go. That was because of Indians. Now, now because the law, the justice of the East ain't come this far, I... 
I see my boy, Bob, taken from me. I'm right sorry about it, ma'am. Bob ain't guilty, Mr. Larson. I'm afraid that again. He ain't guilty. My mother knows. I can't tell how, but if Bob ain't confessed to the crime, he didn't do it. Unless he tells me with his own lips that he'd done it, I won't believe it. I'll get my shawl and my bonnet. Where are you going? To see my boy, of course. But, ma'am, you can't do it. There's a horse and wagon in the barn. If you take me, I'll go to see Bob. I got to get to hear from him if he'd done it or not. Well, he ain't allowed to talk to anyone. I'll find a way to talk to him. I'm sorry, you can't go. I, I got to travel myself now. I, I just brought you the news like I promised Bob I'd do. But, Mr. Lawson. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, by the way. Joe Findlay had some bonds stolen from his place when he was killed. They ain't been found yet. If you happen to see them around anywhere, now or later, you'll know Bob took them. How would I find him? Bob come here, didn't he? He might have hit him around the house someplace. I have to go now. I'm going with you. Sorry, not with me. I got orders about that. <laughs> they won't stop me from getting to my boy. Oh, that deputy might have waited for me, drat him. Now I'll have to hitch up the horse myself. There he goes, heading away as fast as he can. <gasps> Who's that out there? Who are you? Better stay in the house, ma'am. Well, what are you prowling around here for? Uh, come close so as I can see you or I'll fire. You better not try any shooting, Mrs. McAllister. I'm Sheriff Green. The sheriff? That's right, ma'am. Oh, is it true? Is Bob going to hang? Oh, tell me that it ain't the case. Tell me my boy ain't going to hang. I ain't nothing to say just yet, ma'am. Let me go inside your house where it's light. You haven't said he was going to hang. Can't tell just yet. Well, what's that you got? Mrs. McAllister, I took this tin box from the hollow stump where you just seen me. Oh. Do you uh, recognize the box? Oh, yes, I... Oh, that is... Don't the... tell me anything that ain't true, ma'am. I'm trying to get the facts on something. Well, I... That's Bob's name scratched on the tin there. Yes. His box, ain't it? Yes, sir. Thanks for being honest. He, he never did tell me where he kept that box hid. He kept saying that if ever we was in awful trouble and had to have money, we'd have it saved up in there. Uh -huh. My my boy was always thinking of, of a rainy day. Oh, but I don't care about that now. I want to get to town and see Bob. Let's just have a look in this box first. Now then, looks like bonds here, don't it? Yes. There ain't much cash here, not more than $15, $20 in silver. These bonds are worth something, though. I ain't interested, Sheriff. Let me go to Bob. Mrs. McAllister, these bonds are the one that was stole from the man Bob went to jail for killing. No. Yep, they sure are. Old Joe Findley owned these bonds. And the man that killed him stole him. Sheriff Green. Yeah? Hurry. Where? Come on. There's more to be seen. I brought your horse up to the house. Who's that masked man? Tell you later. Hurry before it's too late. I'm coming. Oh, Bob didn't steal him. He's been framed, Sheriff. Listen to See him. See you later. Come. I'm with you. Oh, Sheriff, he ain't a thief. He ain't a killer. Wait right there, Mrs. McAllister. We'll be back. But that man... Wait for us, ma'am. And keep that lamp burning in the window. My keep the lamp man. burning. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Hail, Ranger and the sheriff left the McAllister home and rode swiftly to a point several hundred yards distant. There they found Lem Purvis standing beside a powerful chestnut mare. What's the word, Lem? I got your signal when you lit the fire. And I got the signal from that there point south of here. We all worked like you said. Where's the other signal? It's Tondo down there. See his fire? Come on, then. Hello, Silver! Masked man and the sheriff, with Lem following behind, urged their mounts toward the small signal fire where Tonto waited. The faithful Indian greeted them with a shout. There! There on the fire! I see you, Tonto! Follow us! Get off, white fellow! Hi there! Wait for me! We wait for no one! This is the night to ride for justice! Come on there! Come on, Silver! Led by the swift strides of silver, the group made their way toward another signal fire. But ahead of them, concealed, as he thought, by the darkness, Deputy Sheriff Larson was hastily scooping a hollow in the soft earth next to a limestone rock. We hear him as he speaks aloud. I can get the cash hit away. 
get back to town before the old woman gets there. I gotta do it. Can't take the chance of having her talk to Bob. That wouldn't do. Huh? Now I reckon we'll Don't get... make a move. What? I got to. You. Cover Larson from Green. What's this mean? Means I size a rat upright. We got your cold. You dirty killer. I'll have a look at what you're planting there, Larson. Listen, Chef. How that man get loose? I let him loose. Take a look at what he has, Sheriff. Keep him covered. Yeah. Here's cash. Lots of it. And more Joe Finley's bonds as well. Let me explain that. Here's you... Finley's watch. Larson, this puts a noose around your neck instead of Bob McAllister's. You went to the hollow tree, all right. You stole my cash, you'll have some bonds to frame me tighter than ever. If they was ever found. I didn't have trouble with that lie, Larson. Is that we was there and seen you. You're framing me. It's a put-up it job. It was a put-up job, all right. From the time the masked man here believed in Bob and mistrusted you because of what Lem Purvis told him. I did and I was right. I never misjudged a man in my life. You see, Larson, while you were knocked out, Bob McAllister told how you were so eager to do him a favor and tell his mother where his cash was hidden. You're not a man who does favors of that sort. You weren't satisfied with what you'd already stolen. You wanted Bob's cash as well. You plotted to get it just as we thought you would. And and you went further. You figured to solve my cash in the same hiding place with the rest of your loot. Yeah, and you done more than we hoped you would. What are you going to do about it? Ain't you anxious to know how we come on your hiding place? What's the odds? Bob went with Tano, Lem Purvis, when you left the house. Each time you turned, one of them stayed to mark the turn. When you finally stopped, each lit some brushwood to fetch all the others. We got you red-handed. Well, you won't get me alive. I'll show you what. I got him. By darn, I'm still handy with a six-gun. My legs. Broke the skunk. My legs broke. I can't stand. You don't need to stand, Larson. You're going to hang. You better get for home, Bob. Your ma's waiting up for you. I'm free? There'll be four maladies in court, but I guess you can go home for what's left of the night. I'll see you get back your cash after court's over with. Now, where's the masked man that got me to try a scheme to find a killer? Oh, shuck, Sheriff Green. Him and his engine friend moved off after this rat was shot. But I want to see him. Don't reckon you will. By cracky, he's just like me. The two of us sure can size up a straight shooter like McAllister and a polecat like Larson as well. Come on there, Silver! More trouble ahead! I know Silver! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 